Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Rory Reed back once again. Today we have a new piece that we did. It's a landscape piece titled God is Coming Soon. And um, this piece implements what we've been talking about on the channel for the last few videos. I uh, have the color palette that I want to use solidified as you can see on the screen there. It's that turquoise blue with a little bit of orange, brown or burnt umber and black and white and then we fill in any other color we need sometimes I use a little bit of lavender things like that so started off with a sketch and then what I'm doing now is using some Payne's gray which is the dark color you see here and just outlining my sketch so that when I paint over it you know I can still see the lines the technique I'm using now is that I'm doing my sketch I am outlining it with this Payne's Gray. Then I'm gonna put a wash over this uh, Payne's Gray outline. And that's gonna set the mood of the, the piece. Wanted it to have like a melancholy, like a sad, dreary kind of vibe. So when you see me put the wash on, it'll, it'll execute that initial step perfectly using a blow dryer here to set the uh, acrylic paint in and then once this uh, dries and sets in a bit then we're gonna go over it with our wash and we should have no uh, smudging or you know minor smudging if you have some minor smudging or your lines aren't really straight doesn't really matter because you know when I start painting I'm gonna fix all of those myself so add some water to the palette I'm using a glass palette and then put some of the turquoise blue to get it nice and watery and then boom just wash over the canvas and that gives the right uh, temperature or atmosphere of the scene to begin with and now once that is down we can start painting the piece I start off as customary with the one of the darkest values the shadow color I drop those in loosely and as you can see that when you do this it instantly sets the baseline um, for the piece so that you know it, it the piece immediately starts to take shape all your forms start to develop once you drop in this shadow color because the canvas is white so it does have a, a nice contrast immediately once you put the um, shadow colors in a, in, in their you know a space where they need to be you immediately have some midtones you immediately have the shadows you immediately have uh, the highlights to an extent you know not fully fleshed out but good enough so that you can see the forms sort of take shape immediately and it'll put you on the right path if that makes sense now we have some of the highlighted colors there is um, a light source from coming from the top right on this piece so I'm gonna implement some of those um, light rays on the uh, shack itself so that's what you see me putting in there on the bottom half earlier it's a lighter tone or a lighter value and it's to indicate the uh, the light that's you know on the the shack coming from the top right. And yeah, like I said before, this is gonna be my definitive uh, palette moving forward. Man, gonna create a large body of work all through this year. Probably hope to get like 20, 30 paintings done and hopefully by the middle of the year or so gonna start approaching some galleries again I used to be uh, involved with a couple galleries in the 2016 2017 time frame but then I stopped working with them to focus on you know getting much better at painting and also to um, like sell directly to 
collectors myself. But now I feel like I can, you know, really make some headway in that gallery space. So I'm going to jump back in, hopefully by the middle of this year in a few months or so. I'm just going to put some pieces together that I already have painted and then uh, start sending out some emails to uh, a few galleries here and there. And yeah, right under the uh, roof here is in shadows. I'm trying to get that value properly figured out. You, get also, you have to keep in mind that acrylic paint dries darker than when you first put it on the canvas. So when it's wet, it looks one way. And when it dries, it, it drops down a stop or two. If you're familiar with that uh, lingo from photography, it, it drops down a value or two. So you have to keep that in mind when using acrylic paint. But you get used to it after a while. And if you um, become more experienced, you know, you just test it as you go. You just mix up a color, put it on the canvas, just leave it and go do something else. Paint a different section and then see how it dries down. And then you'll know where you're at and can make any minor value adjustments from that point on. So the initial part of this piece is focused mostly on getting the shack where I need it to be because the shack is going to be the most detailed part of the piece and everything else around it like the foliage and the, the building to the left are going to be loosely painted as to not detract from the main focal point which is going to be the shack in the middle itself. Even the uh, clouds in the sky you see me putting in there and the trees in the background all of that is going to be very loosely painted and that serves two purposes. One, it helps you get done with the painting faster which you know if you're a professional you want to crank out as many paintings as possible so instead of taking an additional four or five hours making those elements real look realistic as well you, you just leave a put a suggestion in like you see the tree I have up, up at the top of the canvas there is literally just like four brush strokes and yeah it, it allows you to save time and it gives the same effect you know your eye is still gonna read that as a tree it's still gonna read it as a cloud and and a sky and etc so it doesn't now now where I'm at in my art career art journey um, I've, I value this much better than fleshing out every single thing because that just becomes sort of a waste of time if you know what I mean I want people to pay attention to the shack in the middle and the message that I'm going to put on the wall under the roof of the shack. So that's where I'm going to spend the majority of the time. Everything else is just a lesser compliment. You know, it's their they're back. Everything else is a backup singer, if that makes sense. Everybody can't be dressed to the nines and everybody can't have their mic as loud as the, the lead singer. So... That's kind of what I'm doing if you're paying attention. So we rework the under the roof again, trying to bring it up to a more accurate shadow color. That That is one of the areas, or probably the only area on this piece that I had, I'd say, difficulty with. But by the end, I did get it to where I wanted it to be and learned a lot for the future as well for any future landscapes or cityscapes that I'm going to implement. So it was work that was needed. And I feel like I uh, leveled up definitely with this painting. So I do have an, some other... Um, landscapes planned and some cityscapes as well. I'm going to be going down to um, Ybor City here. If you're from uh, Tampa, Florida, where I'm from, you know um, 
that place very well. I'm thinking about doing a series of paintings of that area at night. So that's in the works. You, so look for that on the channel coming up in the next few months or so down the line. I'm, I have things I have to do before then, so you probably won't see that soon, but that's just something to look out for whenever I get around to, you know. So now everything is taking shape. The canvas already looks pretty decent. The shack is still a little, um, a little loose, a little abstract, so we're gonna tighten that up as we continue on as well, so. You know, that's just where we are now. I usually paint in like three or four hour sessions because I like to let the acrylic paint set in. And I realize that when I leave the painting overnight, I can really do that because sometimes when you keep painting and keep working the paint and putting layer on top of layer on top of layer, they start to like blend together. And this particular um, turquoise blue color that I use, it does have a level of uh, trans uh, lucence or a, a transparency and um, when I layer them when you see it in person it gives a really nice effect almost like a 3d effect like you can look deep into the the paint so I, I realized that the best way to work with it is to just put on a couple layers then leave it to set in and dry all the way through come back the next day and go over it again with your other layer on top and that really lets it gives a, a nice dynamic look to the uh, the piece, especially after you varnish it when it's uh, when it's done. So you can see here, I'm still combating the underside of the uh, roof, trying to make sure it looks like a shadow, as opposed to the bottom half of the shack. Like I said, that, that's what I had difficulty with with this piece. Should have looked to correct that in the mixing I did um, of the different values earlier when I started the painting. So didn't do that, so I had to do it on the fly. And I'm putting in some darker values as well in, the, in that area to give sort of a dynamic feel. You don't just want a flat one value um, area. Because if you look at anything in, in real life, it, you know, it doesn't really read like that anyway. You see all types of different nuances, little dented areas, that kind of thing. And you accomplish that in painting through the use of different, well, slightly different values. So that when you step back from the canvas, maybe about, um, you know, eight to 10 feet, all of it will read well together. Your eyes and your brain will, you know, mesh it all together. And so I'm already loving where this piece is right now. I even used the uh, palette knife to scrape off some of that first initial wash that I put on. And as you can see, like right in the middle above the shack, it, it puts some light, some super bright areas into the sky which read very well, so I made sure to leave that area untouched for the rest of the way. It just looks dope, man. I like, I, like, I like where it is. I really love this style, man. When I first started painting years and years ago, I was kind of obsessed with, you know, everybody does that. I was kind of obsessed with making sure everything on the canvas looked fleshed out and good, but this way of, or this style of painting is just much more intriguing years later for me first of all when somebody looks at it they'll instantly know that it is a painting because of the brushwork and most of the brushwork is um seen or more prolific in the loose areas the less the less painted areas as opposed to the main focal point which is um you know worked out to almost look real 
and it just gives variety man it, it, it's sort of like it's sort of like looking at a painting from start to finish the in the sky area is a, an area that looks the same when I started the painting as how it's gonna look when the painting is finished and then the shack the focal point is gonna look completely different than the starting point if you know what I mean so when somebody goes and looks at this piece in person or looks at it a picture of the piece they're gonna have like a full scope of interest interesting things to look at I should say So at this point, just working on the little, little wooden um, windows and refining some of the, uh, the values as well. So this, this would signify like the second layer I have going on. Cleaning up the lines on the focal point, which is the, the shack, of course. And... Um, seeing if I need to go any darker on the shadow color the contrast as it stands now looks okay and so I don't think I go too much darker but you know if you want to add a when you're looking at a painting you always want to check the the contrast meaning your darkest dark as opposed to your brightest highlight so as you can see, like in the area to the right of the shack and in the middle of the, the shack, like inside, those are my darkest areas. And it contrasts well with the brightest areas being like the bottom half of the shack and the, and the sky. It just looks dynamic, you know what I'm saying? Even though it's not even near uh, finished yet. And working well with those um, contrasting values uh, adds depth and form to your piece so it doesn't end up looking flat you don't want everything to be dark and you don't want everything to be super bright you want to have a range of values just you know, like you want to have a range of um, saturation or chroma as we say in painting and also when you work with um, any color you want to have a range of hue as well so those are the main three things that you want to focus on when uh, working with any color is the hue meaning um, let's say you're using a red color you want you can push the red towards like an orange or a yellow you know adjust the hue of it to make it look warmer or cooler that kind of thing and if you have a variety of those like some reds that look like you it came out of the tube some reds that are pushed more towards orange some reds that are pushed more towards yellow some reds that could have some purple in it to cool it down or some blues all those ranges you can get from like the hue and that's one element then the second element would be saturation how gray or you know full the uh, the color is so if you take a red out of the tube you can gray it all the way down to actual gray and so all the ranges in between gray and the red that you got out of the tube would be like the saturation level that's kind of a simple way of explaining it for those who aren't aware but so you have hue saturation and then value value is how light or dark the um the color is so
So this is where we left it. The piece is titled God is Coming Soon, 10 by 14 inches on an acrylic on canvas panel. If you're interested in this, check out the store link below. Uh, I also have prints and canvas prints available as well. In addition, check out my Teespring store, teespring.com slash store slash Rory Reed Art. Get your merch, t-shirts, and hoodies. Other than that, man, I hope you guys have a great day as usual. Uh, leave any questions and comments below, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy. Peace.